My fellow Americans, in a few days, we'll be commemorating VJ Day, the 40th anniversary of the end of the war in the Pacific, which brought to a close the most destructive and widespread conflagration in the history of mankind. Over three million American airmen, soldiers, sailors, and Marines served in the Pacific and Asian theaters between 1941 and 1945. They endured some of the most savage combat of the war, from the frozen Aleutian Islands in the north to the jungles of Guadalcanal and the volcanic sands of Iwo Jima. Our fighting forces came back from the defeat at Pearl Harbor and slugged their way across the Pacific island by island. General Douglas MacArthur wrote of the American fighting man in the Pacific, quote, he plods and groans, sweats and toils, he growls and curses, and at the end he dies, unknown, uncomplaining, with faith in his heart and on his lips a prayer for victory. Well, the victory was won, and our freedom and way of life were preserved because of the courage and honor of those who put their lives on the line four decades ago. The Americans who went through this ordeal of storm and sacrifice, just as their counterparts who battled our enemies in Europe, deserve a special place in the hearts of all those who love liberty. Vice President Bush might be a little embarrassed if he knew I was going to say this, but he's one of those Americans I'm talking about. As a young fighter pilot in the Pacific, his plane was shot down on a military mission. He came perilously close to losing his life. If you know any veterans of the Second World War, you might take the time on August 14th to thank them. There are so many heroes among us, and I'm sure they'd like to know how much we appreciate them. The veterans of the Pacific War should take special pride that today, the Pacific Rim is blessed with stability and bustling with enterprise and commerce. The hard-fought battles of the Pacific laid the foundation for what is becoming one of the most vibrant regions of the world. The devastation and rubble of the war have given way to great centers of human progress, futuristic metropolises, or metropolises <laughs> with vast industrial complexes, modernistic transportation systems, and impressive institutions of culture and learning. Nowhere is this more evident than in Japan, now a close and reliable friend and one of our most important allies. In these last 40 years, the Japanese have transformed bombed-out ruins into a great industrial nation. With few natural resources of their own, they now produce over 10% of all the world's goods and services. They've accomplished this economic miracle with hard work, free enterprise, and low tax rates. The Japanese are today, in so many ways, our partners in peace and enterprise. Our economic ties are a great boon to both our peoples. Our goodwill and cooperation will be maintained by a mutually beneficial trading relationship based on free trade and open markets on both sides of the Pacific. The great strides forward being made in the Pacific Rim bode well for the United States. We are, after all, a Pacific Rim country. Already our trade with Pacific and East Asian countries is greater than with any other region of the world. We can look forward to the future with anticipation of a better tomorrow. The people of our country will be in the forefront of the economic renaissance of the Pacific. Liberty not only spawns progress, but is the genesis of true peace as well. As free peoples, it is unthinkable that the Japanese and Americans will ever again go to war. Where there are differences, as there are in the relations of any two great nations, they can be settled in the spirit of goodwill. Those brave Americans who fought in the Pacific four decades ago were fighting for a better world. They believed in America and often gave the last full measure of devotion. One such man was Marine Lieutenant David Tucker Brown from Alexandria, Virginia. While in the Pacific, he wrote home, quote, I am more than ever convinced that this is Thomas Jefferson's war, the war of the common man against tyranny and pride. It is really a war for democracy and not for power or materialism, unquote. Well, Lieutenant Brown was later killed in action on Okinawa, one of so many brave and courageous young Americans who made the supreme sacrifice. I think if those brave men were with us today, they'd be proud of what has been accomplished. At war's end, with victory in hand, we look forward, not back. We lived up to our ideals, the ideals of heroes like Lieutenant David Tucker Brown, and we worked with our former enemies to build a new and better world, a world of freedom and opportunity. That's the America we're all so proud of. Until next week, thanks for listening. God bless you.
Cut. I have one question for you. Yes. Who do you think Wendy's parents are? Who do I think? Wendy's parents are. That's um, Rex. No, that's Jeff oh, Carter. They, he, right, you've got me hanging on that. Except they said that the mother had an accent and yeah. that Maggie had an accent. Hmm, and yet she's the one that doesn't want to see the girl. She doesn't her. like the girl, say. So oh. there's something funny there. Yeah, because this morning strip, there's a startled look on the face of uh, the woman that, that uh, he's questioning. Oh, the, the okay. employer right, of the employer. that man. Okay. I haven't read today's, yeah. but yeah, she's, I think the housekeeper is German and has an accent. Right? The midwife said that the couple, the woman had an accent who had right. a baby. Maybe that's why the employer is looking startled because he in questioning her mentions that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I have started reading the comics. Yes. Can I get you to sign something?